What is up everyone, JD here. I hope you're all doing well today. Today I'm bringing you my full review of the Spyderco Stovepipe. We're gonna be doing specs, size comparisons, and then I will jump into my thoughts and impressions of the Spyderco Stovepipe. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate you loaning me your Stovepipe to check out. If you're interested, Dave has a channel, Sat2Dave on YouTube great vlog and he even shares some of the mods that he does on his knives very recommendable that you check them out and if you like them give him a follow and uh, he posts pictures of his knives and he is definitely into those bruiser knives he checks out uh, other knives but i i believe he'll admit that he favors those bruisers and i personally enjoy checking them out because i love a wide range of knives i check out all kinds of stuff and all that interests me i am even envious of those of you that have small hands to enjoy some of the smaller knives because they have some cool crap out there but anyway let me go ahead and jump into the specs the stovepipe has a 2.78 inch 20 cv blade 4 inch titanium frame lock overall length 6.2 75 inches and claimed weight is 4.9 ounces this is definitely a lot smaller than i thought it was going to be let's check this weight out and then we'll do some size comparisons and jump into the knife so coming in at the 4.9 ounce that spyderco claimed it would be spyderco is usually very good about their weights hitting their marks now before i do the size comparisons this one is the is it going to show? Wait, let me change the angle here. There you go. It is their Taichung Taiwan plant. All right, let's go ahead and do some size comparisons for this one, and then we're going to jump back into the knife. First up, we're going to bring out the Demco AD 20.5. This is close in size. It's a little bit smaller, but it is close into that si close to the size of that AD 20.5. Five. Here it is against the Shaman, another Spyderco on the table, and you can see the Shaman is just dwarfing the stovepipe. Now, as far as the girth and presence, top to bottom, very similar, and I would actually say that stovepipe probably has more of it, but it is just smaller overall. Let me go ahead and move these two out of the way, and then we will get the next two comparison knives out, in case you're familiar with these. Here is the Benchmade Bugout. Bugout a little bit longer, but the stovepipe has more presence, and then the Sig K320, which is going to be larger overall than the stovepipe so if you're familiar with these knives i'm hoping that this helps you a little bit with the size reference for it last but not least i got a couple of budget knives here first we're going to bring out the cj rb pyrite this one here is 3.11 inches so very close in size you got more handle length and a slightly larger blade on the pyrite and here it is against the civivi conspirator and as you can see it's just smaller Next, we're going to do a thickness profile comparison, and I'm actually going to go with the large knives for this one because this one does have contoured scales, so it is going to be very close to the larger sized knife. So you can see here, these are very similar. We'll grab the Shaman. You can see here, very similar. I think it's just slightly thinner than the Shaman, and then we'll check against the bug out, which has the contoured scale, so you can see it against at least one thin knife. Hopefully those profile comparisons help you so you know what it's going to feel like in hand, like what the girth is going to be like, but also what it'll be like carrying it in the pocket. So how much thick, you know, it's going to be if you have the tighter jeans or the more comfort fitting jeans that could matter to you. All right. So ergonomically, this knife is very interesting. So they did a good job of trying to make sure that you had the room, even if you have larger hands to fit in this knife. And it does feel very chunky in hand. It feels like if you've seen where I've done the review against the Wii Roxy or not against, but my review of the Wii Roxy, it kind of has that similar type of vibe really small but made to fit in hand now here's where there's some disparity it has very sharp angles and you feel those angles in hand so it actually kind of 
in, it, it, it's not uncomfortable, but it's not comfortable, right? It's kind of poking you. And if you're trying to do some push cuts and you're gripping on this one, it is going to kind of leave its mark on you. I don't know if you can see where the hand is white, but it kind of does that. And then they miss some edges here. Whenever I go in to grab this one, it's a little scratchy here. I can kind of feel it scratching on the inside of the finger. And then this is all sharp, like all these angles here. I feel all of that in the hand. I think they could have done a little bit better of a job making sure it was chamfered because this could be really cool because it could be one of those tiny knives that you put in there, but that it's so comfortable and it has such a, you know, great presence here for the hand or it has so much room for the hand to land on it that it could be really, really good, but it, it's just okay. The, the sharpness is really kind of irritating. I wouldn't say it's uncomfortable. I would say irritating is a better description. And then, you know, for my size hand, I just go just out of the spoon, right? I'm just falling out past the spoon onto the rhinoceros horn here. <laughs> I don't know what else to call that. It almost looks like a flathead. So it, I wish it was just a little bit bigger. I wish it was exactly three inches on the blade length and then i think if they would have gone 4.2 inches on the handle and smoothed out the edges this would be really good for really large hands as it stands i would say medium to large hands are going to like this a lot um, the hollow grind on it is really shallow and that is totally because they made the spider hole so large i think they could have made the spider hole a little bit smaller and I think it would have been okay. I think because of the way that they landed this, they could have come up with the handle, made this a little bit smaller, and it could have been like this slice buoy to where it had like this cut out. It could have all been up here, cut this out under here, and then have the handle come up a little bit high, higher and been smoother. Um, I think it would have looked better and it would have felt better in hand. So for me, just a little bit of a miss ergonomically. Now the lock bar, nice lock up here. You're sitting at around 40%. Man, it's really hard to see on camera. It's actually better there. You can see it's sitting at about almost 50%, almost 50% 50, 50 lock up. Spyderco is usually around 30, 40. So this one has a little bit later lock up. Um, the action on it is really smooth. This one is running on phosphor bronze washers. And it has a solid enough detent where I don't feel like I'm feeling it even when I'm just lightly flinging it. So it does seem to work pretty good. Great for the reverse flick as well. So the detent on it is nice and it's smooth. It's not a drop shut knife. It is just really smooth. And for some reason it kind of sticks in that open position. You kind of have to fling it and then you end up like smashing it into your nail. Um, I know Dave likes to open it from the side. So for him, I'm assuming that works really well, but this is really smoothed out. Even a little bit as I've had it, it's smoothed out some. Really great edge. And is this, what did I say, 20 CV, 20 CV? Yeah, I know Spyderco does phenomenal heat treats. Shallow hollow grind, like I said before. So it is thin behind the edge, but as soon as you sharpen this, it's gonna start to thicken up because that, that hollow grind just doesn't go up far enough. I really think make the hole smaller and bring that, that hollow grind all the way up here. And then by making this smaller, you can bring your logos and lettering and everything up as well. Blade shape is very unique. I like it. I think it's really cool and different. Um, like I said, it kind of reminds me of a, a rhinoceros as far as like their face, like the top part of their face. It really does remind me of that and a little bit of the body too, or the body might be more hippopotamus. I don't know. Really cool looking knife. Um, a little too small, a little irritating in handle with all the sharp edges. Good lock bar access. It feels solid construction. And uh, I wish it was a little bit bigger. I mean, I, I know that's hard to say. Or a little bit bigger or a better hollow, uh, deeper hollow grind and they had smoothed out the handle. I think this could have worked. I only say I wish this one was a little bit bigger because I actually kind of am going all the way out here with my finger. Um, I do have the longer fingers in my bigger hands. So that's part of the problem. And, you know, it's just hanging off the back a little bit there. So I feel it in the pinky and then I'm feeling it again on the middle finger and then I'm feeling it here um on this edge with the index finger so i'm getting a hit on all the fingers and then the pocket clip too all in all 
it's an okay knife. I think if this one was priced at 350 and even if they kept it the same size, if they could chamfer down all the edges, I think I would own this. As it stands right now, I think this knife is over 400 and I think at that price point, I would have wanted this to actually be a bruiser. I know that's probably weird to hear me saying, but I actually would have preferred it to have been a larger size. Now, I did talk about, and I am going to do a versus against the Roxy, but I did want to bring it out here so you can kind of see the difference a little bit. So the Roxy going out farther, having a large Ford finger choil, and it is actually still longer overall. And I will pick these up and bring them up here so you can see them side by side from the pivot. So you can see it has more cutting edge. It has the Ford finger choil, which does help it. And then it is just longer overall. Um, and it is much more neutral in hand. And then, and I'm gonna do a versus on this as well. Um, I think running it all the way down through would be on there, but very similar thickness as well. But I did want to do that really quick because that is my alternative recommendation is actually the Rock C3. Um, otherwise, just buy this. <laughs> I know that doesn't make any sense, but if you like the way that it looks, it's good construction. The ergos are just a little sharp, like they're irritating, right? It's not hot, uncomfortable. It's just they're irritating, kind of scratchy on the hand. Uh, thanks, Dave, again, for sending this over. I appreciate it. If you enjoyed the review, do me a favor. Leave a like. Consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. I'd love to have you follow along. Thank you all who do support the channel regularly, leaving comments and likes. I appreciate each and every one of you. I hope you have a fantastic week. And until next time, peace.